Because last week's record breaking snowstorm may be long gone, but for thousands of First Nations residents, the situation is far from over. In fact, many have been shuttled into major cities like Winnipeg and Brandon. Our Laura McQuillan is tracking that part of the story for us. So talk to us about the evacuees and what the situation is like for them, Laura. So thousands of people still out of their homes, Michael, waiting to find out when they might be able to go home, when the power might come back on. And some of them are getting pretty frustrated with the places where they're staying, especially those who are staying in evacuation centres. We're hearing some concerns about the beds they're having to sleep on, being those cots on the floor, uh, concerns from some First Nations community members about elders being in those kind of conditions. Also, people saying that they're not getting enough meals in those centres. One woman who we spoke to said she's had three meals in three days that kids haven't been getting enough access to food there as well. We spoke to the Red Cross about that and they say they understand those concerns. That's why they tell people to stay with their family or friends in the first instance. But they say this is kind of the best they can do. It's not a comfortable place to be in one of those shelters. And those people who are in them are just waiting. We're looking at some of the hardest hit areas and in that interlake region that's between Lake uh, Winnipeg and Lake Manitoba some 2,000 customers still without power. Also another 2,000 or so in Portage La Prairie, especially the rural municipality around there. They're among 10,000 customers still waiting to get back on the grid. Manitoba Hydro is saying it can no longer give estimated uh, restoration times because it's getting so many calls and the damage is so significant they just don't know when they'll be able to guarantee that people will get their power back, Michael. So still a big question mark as to when people can go home, but we have to point out there are people that are staying in their homes despite not having any power and already we're hearing uh, of safety concerns as people try to survive without electricity. Tell us about that. That's right. So stories about people bringing outdoor heaters indoors and that's raising a lot of concern with Manitoba Hydro. It's saying do not bring those generators, those patio heaters, those barbecues inside because the fumes they give off are toxic and one woman was actually rescued. Uh, she's found unconscious and crews from Manitoba Hydro rescued her, took her outside. She's now in hospital recovering from that. Uh, at the same time, Michael, questions are now being asked over who's going to pay for this massive cleanup. The Mayor of Winnipeg asking for help from the federal and provincial governments for that because it's going to cost tens of millions of dollars for all those trees, uh, tens of thousands of them, 2,000 wooden power poles needing to go back up. And we're hearing it could take till spring until all that damage is cleared. So for people in Manitoba, there's a lot of water to flow under the bridge on that. They're just waiting to get some answers and waiting to go home, Michael. Okay, Laura, thank you for that. Well, let's stay on the story right now because Erin Moore is an evacuee from the Lake Manitoba First Nation. We are reaching out to her this morning in Winnipeg. So, Erin, good morning to you. Good morning. Now, you didn't leave uh, your home right away. You eventually made the decision to leave. Talk to us about that. Why did you decide to evacuate? Uh, perhaps paint a picture for people at home that are having a hard time imagining what you went through. Well, we stay with my parents, my four children and I, and we were blindsided by the storm, basically. We live right off the lake. We could see the lake and the, the wind came and we kind of didn't really pay attention to it. Then when the, the hydro started flickering off and on on Friday while we were trying to prepare meals, um, we were not prepared whatsoever. Um, on Saturday, uh, Friday evening or in late Friday to the because of the extent of the wind, it was like relentless nonstop. You could just see the wind, the snow being carried in the wind. We knew the wind was high. And with the heavy snow, it accumulated to everything that it touched faces of houses, trees, foliage, you name it, it stuck and it was heavy. And it brought down two great big trees onto my parents' small dwelling where we all were staying. And like my, my children and my mother were running from one end of the house when one tree would fall and back and forth again, screaming when the other tree fell. And when we went out on Saturday to go and get gas for our generators, when we were gonna ride, just ride it out and wait for the hydro to be restored, we seen that that was not an option on the way up to um, Asher, Manitoba on Highway 325. There were down lines. They were so weighed mm. down heavily. Semis had to stop. They could not pass. They could not back up. There was nowhere for them to back up. The whole t entire town of Ashran was shut down on Saturday. We seen vehicles stranded at the gas bar. 
nothing so, was open. No way to get gas. We we left Winnipeg. I have two Winnipeg. Yeah, you left to Winnipeg, so. saw trail destruction on your way, and you're traveling not alone, yeah. but with your kids, uh, plus two more in your care. So what has your experience been like in Winnipeg? Well, you know, when we saw a Facebook post go up on Saturday saying that if anybody needed to seek warmth, seek shelter, you know, what made us leave was the un the unsettling um, dwelling where we were. We didn't know if the trees were going to crash through, so we decided to leave. And we were fortunate to, you know, get a hotel at the Holiday Inn. And, you know, people were saying, oh, you only got one bed. It doesn't matter if it's one bed. You know, children can sleep on the floor. We will make do because as long as my kids were warm and safe from, you know, and any trees falling on them while they were sleeping, so that's that was my priority was to get my kids so a safe, safe so a safe place for your kids a safe place for the two uh, 18 year olds i understand that you're also traveling with so a lot of you packed into a room uh, but compare that to what yeah. your mother and father are going through because they actually decided to stay behind what can you tell us about yeah. that decision and how they're doing right now well, I tried to get them to come, but my father was like, nope. He says, you know what? I have dogs. I cannot take my dogs with me into Winnipeg. My mom said, you know what? We do have a cook stove outside. Uh, we do have a barbecue. And um, my brother was, and his father, um, Errol Ranville, they were generous enough to come up to my parents and they brought two more generators so my parents could stay back because there is, you know, lots of problems that come with power being out and having hydroelectricity as your only source to keep your, you know, your goods cold. And it was Thanksgiving weekend. A lot of community members, not only in our community, but everywhere else lost, you know, their, their food that they had for, you know, for the month basically mm -hmm. it's it's fun it's everything is spoiled and with this temperature soaring this week um it's just going to get worse yeah from from and from the snowstorm to t temperature soaring but how are your mom and dad do you know yeah i kept in contact with them they were able to get gas in a local community and they were um last night i talked to them and they said that they were watching the jets game i was like really so they're <laughs> well, doing okay guys... <laughs> they're doing okay uh, listen we, we're running yeah. out of time here but i'm wondering do you have any idea when you can actually head on home or are you concerned about what you'll find when you go back um well, they're giving updates on certain websites here, like community sites, and they have a projected day for us to go back, which is the 20th of October, and we are one of the last communities eligible to go home. Some communities have been stated for today to return. I'm not too sure about how the the damages on in the West, like Portage, um, the areas like Long Plain, First Nation, I'm not too sure about that damage, but what I hear about in the interlake, it's uh, pretty uh, pretty significant. I've never seen so many hydro poles that were mm -hmm. down at one after the other, where we had live wires hanging right in our community. Um, one was right on a truck, which was very scary to see. Yeah, I can imagine. Well, listen, Aaron, you know, I appreciate you speaking with us today. We wish you and your family well, and perhaps we'll be in contact before you head on back home. But thank you for this. Yes, and I'd just like to send out a big thank you to everybody, the coordinators that help, the volunteers that are feeding the evacuees. You know, that is a big, big thank you. And, you know, it is much appreciated in a time like this. I'm happy that you can share it with us. Uh, Aaron, thank you. Aaron Moore, an evacuee from the Lake Manitoba First Nation who's in Winnipeg.